Hello, this is Rupinder Syal and welcome again to Spartan Tutorials. Today we are going to talk about another cloning technique which is called the hybrid release translation and hybrid arrest translation. These techniques are both related to each other and they are based on the main idea of fishing for a particular DNA fragment encoding a protein. So this is very important for fishing out and for discovering protein coding genes from cDNA libraries usually and from genomic DNA libraries. So let's discuss these two techniques. Now, as I said, the core idea of HRT, which is the hybrid release translation and HART, which is hybrid arrest translation is basically the same to identify a DNA fragment encoding a particular protein. That's what we want. And if you haven't seen our videos uh, for constructing and screening genomic DNA libraries and cDNA libraries, I would highly recommend you to do that or you can study it from the textbook so that you get a particular context because that's what we are going to work on, especially the cDNA libraries because they are directly translatable. So cDNAs can be converted into protein very easily using in vitro translation systems. There are extracts available from different systems, from various organisms, which provide abundant, you know, uh, ribosomes, tRNAs and amino acids to make sure that your particular mRNA or cDNA can get translated and the protein can be expressed. So we can make the protein in vitro. These in vitro translation systems are usually derived, for example, from rabbit reticulocyte extracts. This is a common in vitro translation system, reticulocyte extract. Another commonly used in vitro translation system is the wheat germ extract. As you can see, the wheat germ, you know, it is involved in germination of the wheat seedlings and a lot of protein synthesis is going on. So if you can extract that, it is a ready system for translation of any given mRNA or cDNA. So that's what we are going to work on. So let's discuss the hybrid release translation first. So this is one of the papers which reported how the isolated mouse beta 2 microglobulin cDNA and uh, you know how they fished them for uh, cDNA clones corresponding to rare mRNAs basically alpha and beta microglobulin. So here is the idea you have your cDNA libraries or cDNA pools okay here they are indicating one of the cDNAs which is of interest to them but anyways we don't know them yet. What we do is we hybridize these cDNAs to filters. Now these filters are of many different types. We can have nylon filters, we can have nitrocellulose filters and there are some special filters especially for this technique which are called DBM cellulose filters. These filters are used to hybridize the DNA to them. So the DNA is now basically immobilized on these filters. In the next step, we basically hybridize the mRNAs, which we get from the, you know, uh, organism of interest that we are fishing our mRNA for. So this mRNA will hybridize to its, you know, corresponding cDNA. And the next step is to do elution and translation. So elution will be done of the hybridized mRNA. So we will basically get the hybridized mRNA cDNA complex out and we will put them through translation. So this is the basic idea of hybrid release translation. Now what will happen is only a few uh, you know, mRNA cDNA, probably only one mRNA cDNA duplex will be left. Others will be washed off because they don't correspond to your uh, mRNA and cDNA duplex will not form. And then only that will be translated. Okay. So further, you can do IP just to make sure that you have got the right protein. Here is, uh, you know, the last step, which is the electrophoresis. You can actually confirm which, uh, protein and which uh, size it corresponds to. Here is a study where they were looking at tomato fruit mRNA.
and they were looking at some of the mRNAs which are associated with the ripening. So this is their molecular marker here. Okay. And I would like to emphasize that this in vitro translation and expression is usually done with radio labeled amino acids. So in the earlier days, it was detected by autoradiography. So here you are looking at autoradiogram here. This is our blank. It has a positive control here just to make sure that the translation system is working. Okay, so this band will appear in both the control and the you know, actual translation system. And here is the hybrid release uh, experiment. So both the bands here, these are just control bands. And you can see this is the new synthesized, newly synthesized protein here. Okay, and you can characterize it, you can stand it for mass spec, you can do peptide mapping, you can do immunoprecipitation using antibodies. You can do all sorts of stuff with this. Uh, people have even used it for identifying post-translational modifications. Okay, so there have been reports for that. So this is very useful for screening large cDNA libraries for just one particular cDNA of interest, which encodes a particular protein. Usually because of the redundancy and the, you know, overlap of cDNA fragments, usually multiple cDNA libraries or multiple cDNA clones, they are identified using this technique. But in this uh, case, you can see that the researchers got lucky. They got just one clone, which was specific for that ripening mRNA. All right, moving on. So here is the hybrid arrest uh, translation. So this is the first report by Bruce Peterson back in 1977 reporting this structured gene identification and mapping by basically the same technique, DNA, mRNA, hybrid arrest. So instead of the release, here we have arrest. So what is the difference here? Here you can see the one of the studies which actually used this technique uh, where they mapped and uh, characterized this P66, a particular protein which is encoded by cauliflower mosaic virus. Uh, and it is pretty famous in plant biotechnology field because of its 35S promoter, very strong promoter. This is the cauliflower mosaic virus uh, uh, TEM. And here you can see the infection of cauliflower mosaic virus on canola leaf. You can see this mosaic kind of pattern that's called a uh, cauliflower mosaic virus infection. So the idea is because of this is not hybrid release translation, this is hybrid arrest. So you want to arrest translation. What you want to do is you want to basically inhibit the translation of one particular cDNA. And that cDNA is the one that you are interested in. All the else, you know, uh, mRNAs will get translated. Just your particular cDNA will not be translated. So here you are looking for absence of a particular band. In the hybrid release translation, you are looking for the presence of a band. As we saw, just one specific band was there. Here you are looking for the absence of a band. So it is a much trickier technique as you will see. So here is the genomic map of the cauliflower mosaic virus. It is roughly 8 KB. And according to this paper, you know, you can see it is it has multiple sites of different restriction enzymes. Uh, our interest is particularly on this EcoR1 site because one of them, one of the fragments generated by EcoR1 digestion B actually carries the cDNA and the mRNA, uh, encodes the mRNA for the P66 protein that they are interested in. So this is the data and you can see it is a very messy data. So let's walk through it and I think for exam preparation and for developing your analytical skills, this sort of, you know, figure analysis is very, uh, you know, good for developing critical reasoning skills, how to understand and read the scientific literature. So let's go through these lanes. This is a hybrid arrest translation data. Okay. So here they are, what they are looking is, this is PBR322. Okay, so PBR322, it contains the complete, uh, you know, cauliflower mosaic virus genome. PLW303, this is another cDNA library where they also, you know, produce the entire cauliflower mosaic virus genome. So it contains the entire genome. Okay, PMB9, this is their vector which also contains, uh, you know, P66, the 
genomic DNA fragment. PLW111, as you can see here, it contains cauliflower mosaic virus fragments B, C, and D. So this is important here. Okay. Here, uh, 113, it contains C. Let me just write it down. B, C, and D. This contains C. PLW108 also contains C, but a different vector. 1006 contains A and D. Remember, our P66, they found that it is in the B fragment. Okay. So, PLW109, it is cauliflower mosaic virus A. Okay. So, what is happening here is that they are synthesizing the mRNA uh, cDNA hybrids, which are basically, uh, you know, formed, but only the mRNA cDNA hybrid that is formed for your particular DNA of interest will not be translated. Others will be translated because there is no hybridization or the other fragments, they are free to translate. Okay. So here, what you are seeing is this one particular lane, you are seeing this absence of the band and that's where the experiment was carried out. Okay, so this is where the particular P66 cDNA was not translated because it was hybridized. Okay, others are just control experiments. We have no DNA control also. Okay, so everywhere else you see this mRNA being translated. You also see this being absent in the PLW 303, which is containing the complete genome. This is also not containing the, you know, that band. So this also indicates that it contains the B fragment. So that's why it is not showing that band. So based on this selective analysis, you can conclude that this is where the fragment is and you can map it further and you can look for ORFs and find your gene of interest by using other techniques. Okay. So this was my discussion of hybrid arrest translation and hybrid release translation. These are pretty classical techniques, but as you can see, they are pretty much very useful in characterizing the cDNA clones of interest for fishing out protein coding genes. Okay. If you have any doubts or comments or questions, please let me know in the comment section below. I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.